start as a warm up we have gone through tensor product ok. So, this should be the tensor product of E cross E by E cross E what do we mean E is a two dimensional irreducible representation I am taking a tensor product of two dimensional irreducible representation with basis states I 1 and J 1 and this second E with basis state I 2 and J 2. So, the corresponding reducible representation will have a four dimensional basis state and any arbitrary vector V if I write it as a column as alpha, beta, gamma, delta it should be understood as alpha times I 1 cross I 2, beta times I 1 cross J 2 gamma times tell me j 1 cross i 2 and then delta will be j 1 cross j 2 ok. And then we have also understood how to write the projector for any of these e reps. it depends on the characters in the character table for the e rep e. I want to find what happens to an arbitrary vector. If I take the arbitrary vector to be this sorry this gamma should be same as this gamma. If I take an arbitrary vector and the projection for the e dimensional e rep is this if I do this on this I end up getting this side which means I have two independent bases. Okay. If alpha and delta are equal and opposite beta and gamma are 0 then I will get this basis state. If beta and gamma are non 0 but alpha equal to delta then you will get this basis state. So, there are two linearly independent basis states which is what you should get for a projector of a E dimensional irreducible representation because the rank of this projector has to be 2, there should be 2 independent bases. Is that clear? We did this, I am just repeating it so that you can recall what we did before the last week, what we did so that we can get going. Okay. And similarly, you can also show that the projection operator corresponding to the E rep A1 if it operates on the same vector v it will give you a linear combination of this ok. Projection operator for a 2 will give you a different combination which is orthogonal to this and it is in fact orthogonal to this and this ok. So, the a 2 is also one dimensional projector and you again end up getting a projection operator projection operator gives you this basis state and what will this basis states called? These will be the basis states which are called binary basis right. If you are looking at just the basis primary basis it will be either I 1 J 1 or I 2 J 2 for the E dimensional representation right. If you want to look at the A 1 basis binary basis then the binary basis will be I 1 I 2 plus J 1 J 2. If you try to put them as position coordinates and if these two are different vectors you can call it as R 1 dotted with R 2 ok. So, that is like a scalar which is like the unit representation and if you have a 2 projector then you get a cross product that is like your R z component. Is that clear? Okay. So, with this warm up let us also recall 
how to since I have already said this now you can see that the a 1 irrep in the binary basis will be a dot product of two vectors in the x y plane which is x squared plus y squared if both the vectors are one and the same and it could also be just z squared that could also be a binary basis. These are the primary basis z r z it can be x and y it can also be pure rotations does not distinguish for you whether it is a polar vector or an axial vector why to see whether it is an axial vector you have to do a inversion or a mirror transformation which is an improper transformation. If you are not doing that you will not be able to distinguish it. So, in this case you can say that x and y if it transforms like a irrep which is two dimensional E R x R y also will transform like a two dimensional irrep E. Another way of seeing is that the sigma v character is 0. Okay. So, in some sense that you can have both are equivalent basis here. If you go to binary basis this we have I have also tried to ask you some product of what was the product? Product of a 1 times e if you take a tensor product of a 1 times e then the characters will get multiplied right. The characters get multiplied they are all anyway 1 it does not really matter you get back e and the basis for a 1 primary basis is z primary basis for e is x y. So, you can get binary basis as x z comma y z ok that is a two dimensional basis, but each one is a binary basis. Why are we doing all these things? That is the next question you can ask. Why are we spending so much time in understanding position space, primary basis, position space, tensor product giving me binary basis, right? So, you can ask, it looks like a routine, monotonous thing we are doing. Is there some meaning to it? Okay? So, that is what I am trying to stress now that whatever you attribute to the position space you can look at physical observables in nature. What are the physical observables? For example, if I take the electric dipole moment you all know electric dipole moment of two charges equal and opposite charges separated by a distance r is q times the distance between them. Right? So, what is the nature of that electric dipole moment? Is it polar vector or axial vector? If I write electric dipole moment as q times r vector, is it polar or axial? It is polar, right? It is a polar vector. So, this is one nice observable which is uh, which comes into play whenever we put in some interaction okay, in the energy with this electric dipole moment into picture you do need them. Okay. So, these are observables and then if I ask this observable belongs to which irrep suppose I give you a system which has C 3 V symmetry okay. system has C 3 V symmetry. Okay. You can straight away say that P z observable belongs to A 1 irrep. Okay. Just looking at the z component any polar vector z component will belong to the A 1 irrep. Okay. Similarly, P x P y belongs to E. Okay. So, every observable which I am going to do I can start trying to associate whether this observable belongs to a particular irrep 
given a system with some group symmetry, I am going to confine myself to discrete symmetry. Okay. So, for example, let me just confine to C 3 V, let me say that the symmetry of the system is C 3 V and then observable one of the observable is your electric dipole moment vector. You can say that these components of the observable z component belongs to A 1 irrep, P x P y belongs to E irrep. Okay. Similarly, you can also look at magnetic dipole moment. You all know magnetic dipole moment. So, magnetic dipole moment involves a cross product between current density and the position vector. Once it involves cross product, what is it? It is an axial vector. Okay. So, if you write magnetic dipole moment. d v. Okay. This is going to be an axial vector. So, now tell me where the z component will belong. A 2 e rep. Of course, m x m y belongs to e rep. In fact, C 3 V does not seem to distinguish the x and y component whether it is polar or axial, z component it does distinguish. Okay. So, every observable which I am going to write in nature, I can categorize which irreps it belongs to for a given system with the symmetry which I am looking at. If I am looking at a harmonic oscillator symmetry, then I have to look at it as a C 2 group symmetry and then I have to see which one it will belong to and so on. Okay. So, now I am doing a C 3 V and I am looking at the observables. Okay. Is this clear? So, as of now these all belong to your primary basis. Am I right? I have not really talked about binary basis, it is just primary basis whatever happens to the components of your position space vectors will happen for any of these polar vectors, any of the axial components of the vectors in position space you can again attribute it to the axial components of your other observables like magnetic dipole moment. Okay. So, this is primary basis. So, I am just trying to justify the bottom line all observables can be associated with irreps. Okay. So, why we did this elaborate exercise is because we want to look at interactions involving operators for these observables whether it will trigger a particle in the ground state to go to the next higher state excited state and so on if you want to understand you need to associate irreducible representation to the observables. Is that clear? That is the main reason why I have brought in the basis states, not only basis states, binary basis obtained from tensor products. After that you do a projector and get the binary basis. We have done this elaborately and the reason for it is that it will help us to understand what are the observables associated with binary basis. That is the next question you can ask right? and that is coming from tensor products. Okay. You can take two vectors, vector 1 okay, with R 1 and then you can also take R 2, but you can do a tensor product of this. So, this has three components, this has three components. Essentially, I can write a something which is q i j if I take the ith component of this and the jth component of this. Okay. So, this is something which I can do. If I want to make it traceless, I have to subtract something, but let me just write it as up to some, some tensor. Let me not even call this to be q let me call it as a tensor T i j. 
is this reducible or irreducible? It is reducible. Whenever I take a tensor product, the corresponding vector space will be 9 dimensional, which I have written like a 3 cross 3, but it is reducible. And then you have to do the projectors, appropriate projectors. If you do P e, you will get something. If you do P a 1, you will get something. If you do projector a 2, you will get something. And they will all be binary basis of the irreps which you have. Is that right? So, you will get those binary basis out of this. So, one of the examples which I have just, I am sure you have all seen quadrupole moment tensor when you did this expansion in electromagnetic theory course, right. Quadrupole moment tensor x x component if you try to write explicitly you will get this answer y y if you write it explicitly you get this answer z z is this answer it is traceless that is what I said the quadrupole moment <coughs> tensor is traceless and you can also show by symmetry that this gives a 3 x y and x z component and y z component are like the x z in position space up to overall factor multiplying it which depends on the charges and so on. Now, look at the basis binary basis which we went through. So, now if you want to say which component belongs to a 1 can somebody help me out you look at this x squared plus y squared analog of, of it is q x x plus q y y. Okay. So, this combination will behave like a a 1 irrep in a binary basis okay. and this binary basis is extracted by taking tensor product of two vectors and then using a project. Are you all with me? Okay. So, now tell me what will be the E representation? Is that right? Okay. So, that will be the binary basis representation which corresponds to your quadrupole moment tensor components. So, this belongs to irrep e, this belongs to the summation belongs to irrep a 1. You can also have separately q z z, this is a 1 d irrep and what about a 2? Someone? Is that right? Is that A2 or no? Should be, no? no? Yes or no? Q x y will belong to your A2. So, I have given you some kind of a feel for so, you can still go further, you can find the tertiary basis. What does tertiary basis be obtained from? You take binary basis, tensor product it with one more basis, primary basis, and then start doing projectors and start finding the tertiary basis. Okay. Yeah. I did not. 2 z squared where is it 2 z squared? Which one? Q z z there will be a z squared minus r squared yeah. So, r squared is like a constant I am taking it as a constant. So, then z squared is the basis anything shifted by a constant I am not worried. 
yeah then you will get back this no okay so in some sense you can also write a linear combination with the one dimensional basis in some sense that is another way of doing it okay but here you cannot do that here there are two independent bases there these are two bases but then you can also play around with two linear combinations of the bases right yeah okay any other question yeah, I am just taking that r squared is a universal constant out if you remove that then q x x plus q y y will exactly transform like the a 1 irrep and q z z will transform also like an a 1 irrep that is all I am trying to say. Even if you take a linear combination of 2 a 1 dimerer a rep it should not really matter yeah. Any other question? Is this clear? Is the motivation clear? we had gone through the dr uh, drill of doing character table, drill of finding y basis states, y binary basis, y tensor product. Now, you can associate every observable either to a primary basis or a binary basis and dot dot dot, it can go to tertiary basis, you know you can start looking at things. Yeah. I'm, I thought it is like a cross product like R is it. So, I was thinking that it should be like we do not have any basis here right. I have not written or it is not allowed. Can we check it? If you take x y maybe it is not right yeah what you are saying is probably not right. So, this is this is a question mark whether it belongs to A 2 or not or it is something which has no meaning in this particular group. Some other group it might have meaning, but what you are trying to say is that in the in the character table x y part we never had. Huh? Yeah, I need to see why, but I think x y is not allowed right. If you do the C 3 operation on x and y you will get a linear combination and uh, x y will not have eigenvalue as 1. So, I think x y is not allowed I agree with you. So, this one does not have any place to fit in in the C 3 v character, but this is a way to do it like you write it out look at the binary basis table uh, this table and see where the observables can fit in which irrep it can fit in that is the theme of this showing you yes q x y does not have any place to put in I agree.